Hi, thanks for listening to Reason Silver. Today is Friday, March 30th, 2012. After mixing myself a nice drink, I'm prepared to pontificate about the lessons of the crazy 10,000% hyperinflation bout in post-Soviet Ukraine. First, if you're convinced that it's about to happen in the US, you need to get out of the city, get out of the suburbia, and get into an area where you can have easy fresh water, farmland, and just a few people per square mile. After securing meager rations of bread, grains, sugar, and soap from the government trucks, we found some land and started farming. We grew tomatoes, potatoes, and squash and zucchini. Remember that not everyone thinks that U.S. economy is about to implode, but if you do, I think you have no choice but to get rural. Second, hyperinflation doesn't just end by itself. It has to be stopped. Either governments stop creating money and deal with political and social consequences of gaping deficits, or social order as we know collapses. I remember crazy sounding statistics of every third male between ages of 18 and 30 quote unquote sitting on a needle, which meant injecting home cooked low grade smack intravenously. Narkomani, or in Russian drug addicts, were combing our grandma's backyards for anything that wasn't nailed down, although even if it were, it'd still be stolen. Delicious soft homemade bread rolls made with poppy seeds and a nice helping of sugar and butter went the way of the ruble because all opiates became outlawed. Ukrainian hyperinflation ended when the currency was anchored to something perceived as stable, which at the time was the US dollar. Even after that auspicious event, inflation tore into our paychecks at the rate of anything between 20 and 50 percent a year. But of course, it was a far cry from 10,000% rate of 1993. Third, there's no reason for you to not buy laundry detergents, socks, toilet paper, grains, razors, light bulbs, canned goods in bulk right now. Next time you get a little extra money invested into one or all of the aforementioned goods, you're going to need them anyway. It's an investment, not an expense. When was the last time you walked into a store and went, huh, that's weird. That canister of Tide just keeps getting cheaper. The answer is never, that's when, because no consumer good is getting cheaper. We knew that in post-Soviet Ukraine and it's just as true in modern day America. As a matter of fact, if you invested in a coffee, peanut butter and a new wardrobe, you'd enjoy something like a 20% return on your money. The only alternative to that kind of growth would be gold or Apple stock. Finally, anyone who learned the biggest lesson of the hyperinflationary collapse in Ukraine understood how to live flexibly. Darwin often gets misquoted with this one, but it's one of my favorites. It's not the strongest or the smartest who survives. It's the one most adaptable to change. This means expect anything. Expect the dollar collapse, but also expect that it may not happen for 50 years. Expect the police to show up when you call them, but get a gun. Expect your kid to never go to college but start saving anyway. Expect to sell your silver someday. Have a support structure of friends and family, but don't be afraid to up and move. At the end of the day, those events taught me how to live a better and happier life. So in a way, were they really that bad?